In the previous video, we looked at um, if you are given a specific function and then the input, you are given a single input, then you get a corresponding output, which we refer to it as a code main. In this video, we are going to look at when we are given a set of functions, a set of functions, and then you are asked to um, provide the code domain. Then you should know that just like the previous lesson where the input was a single value and then we had the output being a single value, this place too, when it's a set, then the output should also be what? A set. Very well. So, let's say we have a new function called hx maps to um, 2x minus 1 over s plus 3. Okay, these are new functions. This is an education of functions. So, it's either it's like this or it could be h of x is equal to 2x minus 1 over x plus 3 either way is the same thing okay the same thing okay so now let's say i'm giving this function that is here and then i ask to find an image okay image of this given set 1 5 and then let's say okay let me use 1 2 3 for simplicity we are giving ask to find the image of 1, 2, 3 under the given function. Right? Good. Then the idea hasn't changed. The idea, the previous idea hasn't changed. It's the same idea, but just that you are going to do it three different times because the number of inputs we have now are 1, 2, and then 3. So you are going to do it three different times. And so you are going to get three different answers and then you put your answers in a set okay very well so let's begin if you are to find the image of this so first time you take the first input and say okay so the image of one under the function is going to be two into bracket one minus one over one plus three so with this one, it's just going to be, your answer will be what? 2 minus 1 for the numerator and then over 4. So your answer is going to be 1 over 4. Are you with me? So the image of the very first member of this set under the function is just going to be 1 over 4. Now let's go to the second member. So it's the same thing as the previous lesson, just that you are doing it separately. So you go to the second member, and so you have h of 2. And with this, under the function, you are going to get 2 multiplied by 2 minus 1 all over 2 plus 3. So it is 4 minus 1. And that's 3, so 3 divided by 5. 3 divided by 5. And that is also the image of the second member 2 under the function. Then let's go to the last member of this set, the last element. And then we perform the same and that same thing. So h of 3. Then we now and we have 2 multiplying 3 minus 1 over 3 plus 3. And this is 6 minus 1, which is going to give us 5 divided by 6. So in this one is going to be 5 divided by 6. So 5 over 6. So you have the three inputs or the three domain. Right, you have one, two, three, and then those in, uh, inputs are going to give you the image under this function as this, this, and that. So just as we are looking for the image of this, then the image is just going to be this, right? So you see the way this is placed. You must place the images too 
like that. Cool. So you can see the image set. So the image itself of, uh, of the given domain is going to be, when you create a set for that two, which is going to be 1 over 4 for the first one, then 3 over 5 for the second, and then 5 over 6 for the third. And this should be okay. Else, you can put this this way. The image is here. I can decide to create a mapping for it. So that this first one, the second domain, and then the third. And then this is my domain. This is my domain. And then I will create another one. Like this co-domain co-domain and then that one will be this one that one over four and then this is three over five and then that is five over six so either way i can just map them this maps to this then this maps to this so this one is also okay but it depends on the what the question is asking you to find so with this then this becomes our uh one to one type of function so you see for each and every individual domain given to you it has its unique code domain it has its unique code domain so this is just an extension of the previous video it has the same idea finding the image of a specific input when you are given the function so this one is just a set of inputs so this set you have there put the individual values into the expression put the individual values into the expression when you do so then you get individual answers for each activity then you can just create a set for your domain code domain or image just like the set of the domain is created or better still you can create a mapping for that relation where when i put in one i got one over four so one map to one over four when i put in two two gave me that and it keeps mapping to that so there is nothing special about when you are giving single input and when you are giving a set of inputs, either way is simply the same idea. Your variable or your argument is simply what you are going to put into our function to get your corresponding output for the domain. Okay, so with the first lesson established, which is finding an e the image when you are giving a specific input and then with this established where we found the image when you are giving a set let's look at something unique that is our second aspect or our second task we could be given under function let's look at that in this video so let's continue with that now let me bring your attention to something special about functions functions like i said they are just machines mathematical representation of machines so in technology wherever you create any function uh, any machine they will ask you to model the machine model means you come out with the average model the small signal analysis all those things there they are all on functions so they are just represent your machine you have with a mathematical expression okay so it means that every machine that you create has its own limit it has its own restriction okay you cannot um, accept even human beings there are certain things you accept and there are certain things you don't accept okay so if I define my function, if I give you my 
machine i'll tell you from the manual oh the machine works within this temperature range and therefore you should make sure you operate it within this temperature range beyond this temperature range it could break down or this could happen to it or it will not give you the desired output all those things are part of what machine specification liking this to function every single function has its domain we have some that are general that means that the function has it can take any input at all any input you give it, it will give you a corresponding output based on the expression if you give you two it will give you an answer minus two negative one any particular input you give it, it will give you a unique answer for that input we have a function like that we have functions like that and then there are some that have restrictions to specific inputs or more okay they have restrictions they could accept a lot of inputs but may not accept some specific ones okay so that is the next investigation we are coming to do if i give you the function then i'll ask you to find the find the particular images or the inputs where this function is not going to exist or is not going to give us a specific what output yes so in that case they will tell you to give the domain of the function or they can specifically put it find the range the values of the inputs for which the function will be undefined okay so that is what we are going to watch now or learn now so stay tuned consider the function we have okay let's use the same function now when you look very well at this function you realize that it's a function that is involving fractions okay it's involving fractions that's one aspect okay now let's say this function is also like this 2x minus 1 no denominator then whenever you have linear functions like this a function that does not involve fractions or it doesn't involve square roots functions that do not involve fractions or do not involve square roots then those functions do not have limitation if it doesn't involve fractions or it doesn't involve square roots or cubic roots, roots in general then it doesn't have limitation it can accept any value at all it can accept any value at all so for the, for instance this function you have here any number in this world any real number you input into this function it will give you an answer it will give you an answer so whenever you are giving the function and you are asked to determine which values will make it undefined or will make it not to exist then it's just a matter of focusing first of all ask yourself the function giving me does the expression involve fractions if it is no then you note it down does it involve roots square roots cubic roots fourth root does it involve any of them if the answer is also no then you should know that for every real number you put in that function it's going to exist so the values of x that will make it not to exist to be an empty set or there will be no value are you okay fine but if it involves fraction like this then let's see how we are going to go about it if it involves fractions then let's see how we are going to go about it now fractions let's learn something small about fractions every fraction has its own numerator and then denominator that is how a fraction is generally a numerator and a denominator if a new, the numerator is a real number and then the denominator is also a real number you are going to get a real number 
ask your answer. That's what happens. Specific uh, behavior of fractions. So if it's the numerator is a real number and then the denominator is a real number, you are going to get a real number. So let's say if here is 2 and this is 3, you get a corresponding answer. If here is minus 1, this is uh, 500, you get a corresponding answer, which is also a number. Okay? So that is how it is. Then, also, if you have a fraction and the numerator is 0 and the denominator is a real number, if the numerator is 0 and the denominator is a real number, then we don't care the value of the denominator. The answer will always be zero. That's how the fractions behave. So we don't care whatever is at the denominator, provided the numerator is zero, the answer is going to be zero. The answer is going to be zero. Fine, that is the second property. So let's say zero by 12 will be zero. 0 by 19 will be 0. 0 by 20 will still be 0. 0, 0. Okay. Let's look at the last property which we are going to be applying. If I have a real number at the numerator and then a 0 at the denominator. Wherever you have a function like this, the real number at the numerator and then zero at the denominator. Then we say this fraction, you can never get an answer. It's not valid. It's not proper. So in mathematics, we say it is called what? Undefined fraction. Undefined fraction. Undefined. So, if they ask you, for what value of what x to make this function undefined? You can know clearly that this function here is a fraction. So for a fraction to be undefined, then it means that the denominator of that fraction of that function must go to zero. Because for the three roots, whenever the denominator is zero, then we say the fraction the function or the fraction is going to be undefined. Okay. So if we want the situation, the values of x that will make this undefined, then our concentration should go to what? Values of x that can make the denominator zero. That's the, that's the question. What is the value of x that can make the denominator zero? That's what they are trying to ask you. Okay. So if this question here, they ask you to find the value find the value of x that will make that will make what h of x undefined h of x undefined then it's just like asking you to find the values of x that will make the denominator of h of x go to what zero are you okay good so the solution for such a question will only involve the denominator. We don't care about the numerator is because for what I told you here, you realize that R is at a new top. So I mean the numerator can be any real number. But provided the denominator is set to zero, that undefined situation happens. So with these two, the same thing. We don't care about what the numerator holds for us. All we care about is the denominator. Okay. So anytime you come across this question, you solve it like this. Go to your function, and if it's a fraction like this, only pick the denominator of that fraction. Only pick the denominator. Don't pick the numerator. We are not interested. We are only interested in the denominator. Okay? So just pick the denominator. So that this denominator x plus 3. Okay? x plus 3. So this x plus 3, what can make this thing go to what? Zero. That's the question. 
what can make this denominator x plus 3 go to 0? Because provided the denominator is 0, the function will be undefined. So that's the, the trick. So just go to your function, pick your denominator, and then equate it to what? 0. That's it. Okay. So, you just do this. Do change of subject. So x here, you send the 3 to the other side. And this is going to be x is equal to what? Minus 3. So it means that, it means that you can be putting in inputs of uh, value, any value at all into this function. They will be giving you answer, it will be giving you answers. When I put in 1, the answer will come. When I put in 2, the answer will come. But immediately, I try to input minus 3 into the function, I am going to get an undefined situation. So let's insert it and see. So we are going to have 2 into bracket minus 3 minus 1 all over minus 3 plus 3. Then with this here, minus 2 times minus 3 will be minus 6 minus 7 so it's going to be negative 7 okay minus 7 and here it's going to be minus 3 plus 3 is 0 and you realize that when you punch this on your calculator the calculator will even tell you math error math error math error simply means that there is nothing like this in mathematics at least at your level the reason is that you don't know whether the zero is approaching from left or right. That is at the advanced level. This explanation will give you to you. But provided the denominator of a fraction is zero, then we say that this whole thing is what undefined. So the calculator will tell you mass zero. So if I am asked to find the value of x that will make this function undefined. I only have to pick the denominator, equate the denominator to zero, and then I solve for x. That is the whole idea of what this particular lesson. I hope it's fun. Now let's change the function and do another one. So we'll consider this new function x plus 6 over 2x minus 5 and you have to find the value of x that will make this undefined just like the length just now you only have to concentrate on the denominator so you just pick the denominator of this function here and then you equate it to 0 so you just have this 2x minus 5 and then you equate it to 0 so at the end of the day, we are going to have 2x is equal to 5. So 2x being 5, we are asked to find the value of x, not 2x. So you are going to divide through by 2, divide through by 2. So at the end of the day, my x is going to be 5 over 2. So it means that anytime I insert 5 over 2 into this, I'm going to have that undefined situation. You can test it yourself and see. If you put in 5 over 2 plus 6 will be the numerator. And then the denominator here is going to be 5. Okay. 2 multiplying 5 over 2 minus 5. So these two cancel this. So you can see clearly I have 5 over 2 plus 6. All this divided by 5 minus 5, 0. So when you have this situation, then we say that, oh no, this function or this particular expression is going to be undefined. So you can be given here to be a quadratic equation. The same thing, just take the denominator, equate it to 0, and then you solve for what? X. As simple as that. Okay. So thank you very much for joining us in this in this particular lesson. We will display I will display your assignment, then you can contact us for any clarification. 
See you in the next lesson. Bye. -bye.